Hey, Cyber Dragon here. Bring you guys part five of what if Deku was Taskmaster. But before that, uh, I got some comments on the ship for the Star Lord video, and some of you guys did say like, "Do Mina or Jiro?" And uh, I understand they did put explanations on why both. So, but uh, yeah. So whatever one wins, like. They get the most comments or likes. I will do that as a ship, but I will wait until the next few parts for that. Maybe like I'll put them in the team I'm building for the guard, the new guardians. Basically, like he's building a team just of some of the one A students as guardians of the galaxy. But yeah, so you're not here for that though. You're here for. Taskmaster, so let's begin. It is after the sports festival. Jiro decided to hang out with Deku. Mandalay did call to congratulate him, and Deku does say, like, thanks, Mom, and uh, I'll be visiting you here sh sooner or later. said, okay, and hangs up the phone after that. Jiro is just on the couch, sitting. Deku decided to cook them both some food. He was thinking, like, should I ask, should I confess? Like, the rest of the girls at 1A, it's kind of been eyeing him lately, because of his muscles and whatnot, but I don't want to lose him if he does say yes to someone else. That's her thoughts right now, of course. Deku is thinking some, somewhat the same thing, like, should he confess? Like, he is soon. He doesn't want to uh, lose her. But, yeah, so... Uh, so, um, uh, they eat. It's like, they're just hanging out in general, not on a date or anything. Although, they both think it's like, is this a date, technically? Jiro blushing, thinking this is a date. That's Deku. After they eat, uh, they decide to watch a movie. But during they what they are watching a movie, Jiro actually passed out, leaning against Deku. Deku, seeing this, blushes a lot, a bit, like, a uh, Jiro... Then she no he notices how peacefully Jiro is sleeping. He just says, like, I don't want to bother her. I'll let her stay here tonight. I might as well text her parents. Tell them that. He does, and he doesn't want to move, so he just lies next to her. Put her on her side and just lie on the couch with her. Sleeping. Says next to each other. Comfortable. Just being all comfortable and whatnot. Next morning, Jiro wakes up, like, thinking, where is she, and why does she feel warm? As she is noticing an arm around her, seeing it's Deku, just cuddling up next to her. He is also asleep. Jiro blushes a beet red, like, uh, uh, Midoriya, uh, uh. Although, she's actually liking this, so she's like, uh, Maybe I could stay like this a little longer. She just sits there. And lies down. Just cuddling up next to him. Even closer. Realizing what, what position she's in right now. Embarrassed is all hell though. But still enjoying it. After Deku wakes up. Seeing like. Jiro is in a sleep. Like oh I'm, I'm sorry Jiro. I'm. I know, it, it's okay, Midoriya. Both are blushing, beat fed. So, should we head to school here soon? I mean, we do have the internships coming up, I heard. Oh, y yeah, of course. Wonder how many offers we both got. <laughs> both of them laughing nervously. Huh. 
Geo actually thinking like that was kind of the best sleep I had in a while. So I kind of want to do it again, but I it is it wrong for me to think that right now? So she heads back to her place, changes, get ready for school, and heads out. Deku does the same thing. They both go together. Embarrassed uh, what happened, but you know they are still. They're still not sure what the feelings towards each other are, like, if they like each other or not. Afterwards, when Deku gets there, Bakugo charges at him immediately, like, Damn it, I realized something. You didn't have your equipment during our battle, so we and me are going to fight again with your equipment this time. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot about that. Look, Bakugo, right now you and me are not doing that. Also, who pointed that out? Did you realize that? or Like, no, it was me. Oh, that makes sense, Foppy. It was Foppy who mentioned it. Because he pointed out, like, you know, if Deku had his equipment, like his shield, swords, and whatnot, he probably could have won. Pakuko realizing his too. And yeah, that's why he, as soon as Deku checked came in, he did charge at him like that, so that's a little humor. Azara comes in like, that's enough. Now, since I'm at the sports festival, you guys have got an office for your internship. But before that, let's get your hero names down. As such, everyone has the same name as in canon. And, except for Deku. Deku chose the name, the multitask hero, Taskmaster. Everyone's like, yeah, that that works actually. You are you are very talented, and you do learn stuff pretty fast. Midnight gives the thumbs up for it. Jiro walks in like, so Taskmaster, hmm, not a bad sounding name. Uh, yeah. But his head, he's rubbing his back of his head. Still embarrassed of what happened last night. Everyone noticing this. So the girls pull aside Jiro and all the guys start to talk to Deku. We're going to the girls' perspective. Mina starts off the conversation like, What is up with you and Midoriya lately? Sir. Have you told him about your crush yet or anything? Uh, uh, no, but I did stay the night at his place. Oh, really? Uh, not like that. I just passed out, and when I woke up, I noticed that Deku was laying next to me. I guess he didn't want to leave me by myself, so... Ah, oh, well, isn't that sweet of him? So I bet you enjoyed being cuddled by him. Yeah. <laughs> All of the girls are smirking at him. Uh huh. She didn't realize what she just said. Like, uh, but not like that. Like, I just. Like, he was just warm and kind enough to stay by my side during my sl- when I was sleeping. And uh, I'm not making the situation any better, am I? Just a minute, girl. You're in love with him. Like, I, I don't know. He-, he might like someone else. Besides, why would he like someone like me? Are you kidding? You're amazing. Sir, don't short sell yourself short. He, sir, no matter what, he, he, it's like what he think, he will think the world of you if he truly does like you. Maybe. And now the guy's side. So, like, so what did you and Jiro do last night? I didn't do it. We didn't do anything. She passed out. I made sure she was so she was warm and just stayed home. Let's say that tonight. We didn't do anything. She just fell asleep on my couch. All right, man. Say, do you have a crush on her or something? So, uh, so, yeah, I kind of do, I guess. I want to wait to see if she likes me like that. So, can you guys not mention anything to the girls? Yeah, okay, man. Don't worry. So, 
we won't say a word. And Kirishima and Kamen, no, he's mine. Like, yeah, right, we're gonna tell them either way. And, yeah, so... Now, the offer's about to be... Like I said, all right, everyone, calm down. Now, here's the offers. Bakugo getting third and the highest. Deku's getting second, and Todoroki's getting first. They're surprised by this. Like, what? So Deku didn't get the highest? It's like, well, it's a... Yes, I'm believing because of his unique set of skills. Some heroes have met him before and trained him, but he's also trained them at the same time during the camp... Like, the... The camping trips that we go to every year. So he has been helping the future generation of heroes train. So they all look at him like, "What? You didn't even? You just also trained heroes?" Yeah, I would like. Yeah, I've been thinking to do something like Azara's doing. After my hero career, I would teach uh, in UA perhaps one day. And teach the next generation of heroes. Of course, after being number one and doing all that type of stuff. But either way, I'm going to be helpfully tr- teaching at UA. To, or at least ben- helping benefit UA somehow. As I was like, well, if you do need a recommendation to tr- teach here, I can definitely help you with that. Besides, I think Nezu would hire you on the spot anyways. Because of your long history of working with and training heroes. So I think you are pretty safe to say that you will definitely be a teacher at UA someday. You perhaps may even be the next principal of the UA. So, thank you. Uh, happy to hear that. So, and if you're wondering how many offer, why he didn't get so many offers, is mainly due to the fact that I mentioned... He, some heroes has more powerful quirks, which he can't copy the quirks, but he can copy the movements. Which some of the heroes did notice, like he kind of, no, he only learns a lot, so they don't think they can teach him much. The more higher tier heroes, like in the top 50s, think like he, they can still learn from him. And there's some other heroes that think he can teach him and stuff. And, yeah, while Deku's looking at the people who wanted him, some of them are from the, like, one of them is from Mandalay. Okay, I think we all know why Mandalay did that. Like, ugh, Mom, seriously? Like, then one offer actually caught his attention. Sir Night Eye. Yes, I'm doing the overhaul stuff a bit early. I kind of just want to in general. Hmm. Night Eye. Wasn't he the sidekick of All Might? I never really seen his fighting style, but I know his quirk. I might be able to learn something new from him, honestly. So he's considering that. And the reason why he's not going to Gran Torino, well, he went to there to learn full cowling, but since ever he already knows it, and I would think Deku would somehow try to copy Gran Torino's movements, because all my dead mentioned him beforehand, I would think, like his teachers and whatnot. Oh, like, All Might would mention about Deku to Gran Torino and how he already has full cowling and he... Has fluid movements. I don't think Gran Torino can teach him much. So yeah. Now I would be the perfect. Person to do this with. Such he also. Helps other people at. Uh, there too. At him, in his class. Pointing out some key things. That they might want to look into. Fighting styles. How their quirks can be beneficial to their. And they listen to him because. Well, he also analyzes their quirks, too, saying what they should have done with their quirks. He is planning on teaching someday, too. And he 
even though he doesn't have the quirks himself, this is what he would, he tells them what he would do with them and how he should, they can do it. He makes Barker as an example. He moves in the air with his explosions, which is very clever. But not only that, he also makes AP shots and the Howitzer impact. Great moves to have, he thinks. And such, he kind of actually trains, start helping some other people train. Helping Jiro, Kirishima, because why Kirishima is because, well, he sees potential in Kirishima's quirk, hardening. And if he can do sorts of stuff with that, he might be a worthy hero. He even tried to help Karim and Nari overcome his weakness. Outputting more electricity. But otherwise, most part he's just helping to help choose the proper interns chips, but it, the final decision is up to them, he says. He's just pointing out some people he might want they might want to look out for. But yeah, everyone still does go to the same internships, because some of them are actually pretty useful to be like gunhead for Miraka, so good. Deku would think. And Deku is wondering, like, why did he uh, choose manual? He has nothing to do with speed. And not only that, he's kind of a, like, a low-tier hero. He possibly could have gotten better offers. Then he remembers what he heard about Ida's brother. Like, oh yeah, he might be going after revenge. I'll see if I can somehow get to Hosu after a while, see if you'll be alright. But either way, I'm gonna go to Nine Eye and learn some stuff about his quirk and his fighting techniques. Such it is now the day of the they all depart. Deku trying to convince Ida not to do it again do this, but Ida doesn't listen. So, yeah, now, now Deku heads to Night Eye's agency, and Night Eye is like, So, you're the ninth wielder of one for all. Hmm. Not to say that you don't have potential, but I want to see that potential for myself. Take this stamp away from me, and I will gladly give you all the support I can te- everything I can teach you. But if you cannot take it in three minutes, then you are, then I do not see you as a worthy candidate. And I want you to g- think about giving it to Mirio instead. Like, who is Mirio? Or like, not, he doesn't say who's Mirio, because I would think Mirio would be at the training camp, too. Like, hmm, Mirio, huh? I did think Mirio could have been a good successor, too. The only key difference is that, well, All Might didn't really want another him. He wanted someone who he truly thinks was a worthy successor. I do admit, I would have picked all- Nymeria myself too, if I was in All Might's shoes, if I didn't find a successor in time. I understand your hostility somewhat, but at the same time, he did choose me. I did want to look for another successor just in case, though. But after the USJ, I decided to take up on All Might's offer. Not I hearing this, and kind of happy that he somewhat agrees, but at the same time, he's not, you know, really happy to do the like, hmm. Well, you are quite intelligent enough to know the big comprehension of this. I still want to test you out, though. So, take the stamp away from me, and I'll even teach you my fighting technique. Deku is thinking, like, hmm, this fighting technique possibly could be unique. Plus, if it has to do anything with the stamps, then I could potentially get something greater out of this. Even a new weapon of sorts. Alright, Night Eye, I'll take up on your offer. And the timer begins. Night Eye not really able to see his eyes. I'm going to say because it's 
lenses are too thick for night eye to see through, but Deku can see through it fine. Matter of fact, those lenses can also see in, like, night vision, if he sets it to that. Night eye realizing he's not going to be, this is not going to be easy for him, because Deku did comp- thought about this beforehand, too. Thinking that maybe not someone like Night Eye's court could be out there too. So Deku is sort of attacking Night Eye, which Night Eye is dodging. He's not not Deku's not trying to hurt him or anything. Night Eye is realizing like, hmm, he's holding back. I don't even think he is using one for all in general. If not, then why isn't he? Plus, his movements are sloppy. Does he not notice this? Maybe he's not a worthy candidate after all. But in Deku, he not as not realizing Deku is dropping some traps. These are new equipment that I thought would be fun, and he could p- possibly should throw in them too. Afterwards, Deku starts to get more faster with his movements. He's just not. He should not make not make not I think why is he doing this instead of seeing what he's dropping. And when Night is in position, Deku said, "Gotcha." Activates the traps, firing bolas. These are quick canceling bolas too, so they can also electrify the enemy too. These are the same bolas from like the Spider Man. Uh, the PS4 Spider-Man game, so just imagine like those basically. Now that he gets captured in them, he's wondering like, what are these, and such. Like, Deku simply says, "These are new technologies that I've been kind of working on. Quick canceling bolas. Sim- I simply made some obvious moves so that I didn't hit you, so that I, so I can restrain you." Pr- quite easily. If I want I knew this could have been a long fight, so I decided to do some sloppy techniques on purpose to throw you off. To make you wonder why am I doing this or if I'm not even trying. But while you were focusing on that, I was making sure you didn't notice the bolas uh, dropping on the ground. <coughs> uh. Oh god. Sorry. Quick sneeze. Mm. Not I impressed and realizing like he wasn't even using one fall either too. Deku takes the stamp. Not I said, Alrighty then. I can see that you are a worthy successor after all. But I still wish to teach you some my stamp techniques as well. I noticed you didn't use one for all in that fight, if I'm... Am I correct? You are correct. I use my own physical strength and technique alone. Although, not to say that I wouldn't, as a last resort. It's more or less my trump card. Like, when I absolutely know... that, Like, to know when I will win with it. Such... Through the... Today, Deku learns how to use Night Eye stamps. He even adds them to his arsenal now. Just Night Eye said, "Alrighty then. Well, you can go out patrolling for the rest of the day. I'll be here, but also I am also working on an investigation too. I hope you can join me on that whenever you get your uh, provisional license." Deku nods and heads out on patrol. Night Eye is not sending Mirio with him because he thinks he can do it on his own. Which he can, so. Some people noticing him, like, hey, isn't that. Like, who is that? Is he a new pro hero? Because they don't see his face, he just sees the ma- They see the mask and the hood. Nothing else. Now, Deku heads to the same street that he was bumps into Aerie, which Aerie does bump into him. Deku does catch her before she falls, though. Now kneeling down, saying, are you okay, little girl? Then noticing, like, wait, she's shaking. There's also bandages around her arms and legs, and she seems scared. 
Hmm, she might be running away from something. Then, since the blood murderous intent, or something like, uh, like, sensing overhaul in the alleyway, like, there's something coming close to it. Like, then, Deku just grabs onto her, like, hold on tight, okay? Airy nodding. So, he does parkour up on the top of a building, making sure no one notices him. Says, when overhaul reached the end of the alleyway, he's looking around for Aerie. Then, he is pissed. Going on a tantrum, like, damn it! She ran away! Someone must have found her and took her to the police. Calling his seven precincts of death now. I believe that's what they were called, right? Whatever, like, overhaul's men come out. Overhaul tells him, like, fine Aerie. It says, I don't care what you have to do for it. To do it. Just find her now. They all separate to find her and overhaul her heads back. While that was happening, Deku actually was still on top of the building. No one was on top of there because they didn't think, you know, to look up there because it was just a little girl. Deku looking at her like, okay, are you okay? She's nodding, hugging him tightly, as I wait to say thank you for saving her, or me. He's like, alright, I'm going to take you back to the agent, my agency. Says, what is your name? Uh, Aerie. Alright, Aerie, my name is Izuku Midoriya, but my hero name is Taskmaster. Come on, I'll make sure you're okay. She's crying out of relief, like someone is saving her for the first time. She's thought ne- this day would never happen. As such, Deku just runs on top of buildings, making sure Overhaul doesn't see, just in case he's still around, or any of his men. He returns to the agency. Ex- now he explains the situation of what happened. Night Eye is like, you did a very good job saving this little girl. Says, I see that all my did choose a worthy candidate after all. I still have my doubts even afterwards, but now that I see that you are truly a worthy successor, says, I'm happy to offer you a hand whenever I can. But let's also ask this little girl some questions, like her involvement with the Yakuza's. He nods, goes into the room where Aerie's at. Aerie's frightened of Night Eye, but seeing Deku. Deku's uh, taking down his hood and removing the mask, showing his real face. Like, hi there, eh? Says, I, uh, I hope you're okay. Aerie is actually now really happy to see the face of his savior, of uh, her savior. And I think I'm going to do, like, kind of like a father-daughter type deal. Here, yeah, like, Deku is kind of like the father of Eri now. Jesus goes up to Deku and hugs him. Says, thank you. Thank you for saving me. Just crying out of relief. Look, it's no problem. Do you mind if we ask you some questions, though? Deku kind of just... Feeling a connection to Aerie. She was some... So Deku knew, like, after the Yakuza's would be disbanded, and she was taken away from the group, she would have been put into foster care. Possibly even abandoned. But, because he doesn't know if he has, she has any family, or she was abandoned, too. So he's thinking, like, maybe I could take care of her. Or at least that mom could take care of her. As you know, I think I'm going to do, like, a brother-sister type deal. Like, Ari sees Deku as a big brother now. Yeah. Nara does ask some questions like, What were the Yakuza's doing to you? What was your involvement? Ari answers everything. Tells them, like, they were uh, extracting my blood for something and such like that. 
Thank you, suck to the bone to hear this. Sorry, repositioning. Just cracking the bones now. Thank you, simply said. Sir, if all due respect, whenever we do the raid, I would like to be part of it. Now that I've seen the determined look in Deku's eyes to bring them down, he agrees to this. Like, whenever the time comes, you will be a part of the raid. But, we also got some other matters we have to attend to. Like the safety of this girl. What should we do? Deku said, Why don't my... Me and my mother take care of her. So she seems the most calm around me, and she would be pretty far away from the city, too. So the Yakuza's couldn't really find her easily. Now that I agree to this, having to put some proper paperwork, and Deku having to call up his mother to let her know the situation. But for now, Aerie will stay there until Deku kind of leaves for this. But there's also some other matters that we have to attend to. So there's been a call out for some heroes to send, like to be called out to the Hosu. Not I is saying this to all his team members. Deku is saying like, Hosu, hmm? I don't want to leave Eri behind, but at the same time, Ida's there too. Deku said, Sir, I would like to go to Hosu as the volunteer. Sir, my friend is out there trying to seek revenge for something the hero killer did. And if anything happens to him, I'll, I, I don't know. I feel terrible and I didn't help. Now I agree to this and let Deku go. While Deku's on the train, the attack on Hosu City happens same as in canon. Deku is looking for Ida, and when he does find Ida, he actually fires his two pistols at Stain. One in the... both in the hand, making Stain drop his sword. Looking around, like, who did that? Seeing Deku at the end of the alleyway. Two guns in his hand, like, Stain, I want you to surrender now. I am not here to fight you, but you're harming two civilians. Uh, two he one hero and one hero in training. I wish not to put any harm on you. Stan is saying, like, hmm, he's here to save them, and he doesn't want to put any harm on me. Well, he's thinking that. Ida is like, Madoria, get out of here. This does not involve you. So, this is my revenge. So Deku says, hmm. The essence of being a hero, like, like, ah, what was the thing that they said in canon? Like, All Might once said, like, meddling where you don't it, technically have to is the essence of being a hero. While Zane is hearing that, he smiles, uh, the menacing smile, like, hmm, you got some good friends in Genium. So, I see you as a worthy hero, says, uh, w kid. So I'll let you walk away now. So, Deku replies, like, the name's Taskmaster. And no, I'm not going to walk away from this. Besides, says, if I'm going to walk away, it's going to be with these two and you behind, and you tied up. Not to say that I'm not going, like, eh, you get the point, like, he's going to try to save him. Stain smiles at this. I'm like, well then, I guess I have to take you down first. Stain runs at Deku, hoping to cut him. Deku, watching his patterns, getting them down. He pulls out his shield and his sword. Just defending with both items. Stain is impressed by this already. While that Deku is actually learning Stain's movements too. Even copying some of his movements. Surprising Stain like he already learned my movements that fast. He is definitely a worthy hero. 
while that the fight is going on, Deku's still dropping down the little mines, the bola mines, the traps. Stain's not noticing because he's more focused on the barrel than where Deku is dropping. So when Stain is in place, Deku activates the bolas. Stain not can't dodge in time. He gets captured. Saying, what are these? Like trying to struggle to get out of them. Can't really cut them either. Deku says, bowler traps. They're quirk cancelling and they have some other key features as well. Activates the shock feature of them. Shocking Stain and knocking him out. Not only that though. He does have like a little wrist uh, device on him. Like they can shoot some like zip like zip lines or not like zip line like grappling hook and uh, has a control for the equipment he runs too. After that, both native and Ida can stand up and like move again. Like what? So how did you defeat him so easily? So. I didn't really use, like, did you use your quirk and such? And like, no, not really. So I should use him with tactic. So I don't think I will get in any trouble for this. I don't think the same could be said about you either. What were you thinking? Being so stupid like that. You still have your brother with you. So be grateful you had any, have any family members. So then he tells him his backstory. Like, trying to get through Ida, like, you know, my mother abandoned me when I was not even a week old. At best, I was three days old. And I was abandoned by my biological mother, and she didn't want me. Then Mandalay found me. My mother, that I call her now. She, she didn't know me. Hell, she could have left me at the orphanage and brought there myself, but she, for some reason, took me in. So be grateful you still have a living relative who loves you, unlike me. I didn't have, I don't have any blood family to call my own like that. I have a mother who, she adopted me. I see her as a true mother, but she's, but still, no, having no father, no Actual siblings like that can still hurt someone. Ida realizing like he was acting selfish and just greedy, he apologizes to Midoriya, like Deku, saying, "I'm sorry, Midoriya. I was acting foolish and not thinking straight. Hope you can forgive me. I've already have Ida. Now let's get you both out of here." I can at least patch you up enough so that you can walk, but you need to go to a hospital. So he does patch them up, carrying Stain over onto his shoulder, one of his shoulder. He does send on a message like the hero ca has been captured. The heroes go there. Same thing as having cannon for like Deku, like getting captured by the Nomu, but. Deku got out of the Nomu's grip and got the wings to stop moving, tying it, him the Nomu up, saying like, "We got a live one, boys. Like, like we got a live one. Let's get it out of here and the hero killer before they, before anything bad happens." But yeah, no, the same thing with Stain just happens like. Oh, there's only one true hero, All Might, but he's still tied up, and Deku not phased by his bloodlust, so. He just activates the shock thing, and shocks him to make him immobilize again. Turning off his bloodlust and not. But not only that, Deku does learn his bloodlust, like how to harness it. Seeing how it was, he realized like bloodlust can be a useful trick. He thinks, and he has it in his mind now. So yeah, not only that, he did learn some useful skills from Stain. So yeah, the hospital scene happens. 
the police dog comes in saying like you can't take any credit because you defeat him without you having a hero license and you use your quirk. Deku telling him like I didn't use my quirk, but I'm happy not to take credit for it. So I can understand the impact that it could have with the hero society. So I will not do anything about it. He is like okay then. You could have taken credit for it, of course, but since of you don't now, so I will. So, who should get the credit then? Do you think? Deku thinks for a moment. They want to try to give it to you know Endeavor because he was around there. Deku like no, nah, don't give it to Endeavor. So, at least let me choose who to give it to. They can at least agree to that, they say. And, uh... He says things like... You know, give it to you, Manuel. Like, he's a... Well, he was Ida's psychic, and... For, like... He was supposed to be Ida's... What, uh... Studies... Uh, part of the internship, so... He should deserve some compensation for... Like, at least... For Ida's stupidity. As an apology. Manuel. Go, takes the offer Deku is giving him. And. So yeah. Manuel gets some credit instead of Endeavor. Endeavor is a little mad about this. Like he was originally supposed to get it. But they changed their mind. Saying oh no Manuel did it instead. And yeah. After that, he heads back to Night Eye's agency. Night Eye actually hearing what happened, like truly what happened, like Deku stopped the hero killer, congratulating him, and he said, I will keep the secret, of course. But, now, you and Eri can go back. You have learned everything I can teach you out here. I hope to see you during the raid, whenever I can. Deku nods, and him and Eri goes back to his home. Deku actually calling up Mandalay ahead of time, letting her know, like, Hey, I got the little girl that I would like to you to meet. And can you meet us at our house? My house. Mandalay agrees and heads there. Mandalay now waiting there, seeing Deku and Eri. Saying, so, what is the situation, Izuku? Well, you see, Mom... She was part of the the Yakuza, or being held captive by the Yakuza. And I was wondering if you could adopt her to be like a, your daughter, perhaps. So, she needs a good mother, and I truly think you would be a good mother to raise her. Mandalay is happy to hear that Deku wants her to adopt her. Like, are you sure, though? But, like, I'm not sure. I still have to raise Coda, you know. I know you have to raise Coda, but... Sir, if you're not gonna... Sir, can you at least consider it? She has no parents, because we did look into her history. And... Well, she needs someone, a strong role model. I would do it, but at the same time, I'm too young. Plus, she's, I've already seen her like a little sister. So then I think she sees me like a big brother almost. She is holding on to Deku quite tightly. And Mandalay noticing like she is really comfortable around him. and She says, alright Izuku, I'll adopt her. She can be like a little, you can be like her big brother. Plus, I do miss raising a little one of my own ag once again, so... Yeah, I think it will be a good thing for me to do. Deku's thanking her, and... Then goes to Aerie, like, Do you want to be adopted by my mother? You be... I'll be like your... Act like, be your big brother and all. Aerie, like... Okay, but... So can I call you big brother at, if you, she does? She's, of course you can. Huh. 
I would love to have a little sister like you. She's happy to hear that. So that she's smiling and hugging Deku. So, and she says she's now starting to trust Mandalay too. So through the rest of the day, like the couple of days that they had left of the internship, Deku did get off a bit early for that because he learned everything fast. With trolls, all the hero protocols and whatnot. As such. Ares is now getting used to Mandalay and she does see her as a mother now too. And Izuku as a big brother. And Koda was there too so like they were kind of like I guess because Mandalay did adopt Koda so I guess they're like a she has three children like that, so. Yeah, so I guess, like, Koda would be, like, a brother as well. So, it's, Mandalay does go through the legal process of adopting e- Aerie, and, yeah, so. All through that time, Aerie's getting used to Mandalay and Koda, let's say, yeah. And. When they. Deku has to return back to school. Deku said, Alright, Aerie. I'm gonna be heading back to school. I'll come visit you real soon. You and Mom, okay? Okay, big brother. I hope I see you again. And goes off with Mandalay. And with that, I'm gonna end it there. I was thinking to do kind of like a brother... Like a father-daughter type relationship with Deku and Aerie, but... I'm thinking that for maybe some other series at some point, so... Yeah, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoy it, and... Do you let me know the ship for the Star-Lord video? I am actually interested to see, like, which one would win, either Jiro or Mina. Because I do like both to do both of those characters for this type of stuff, but I will obviously do other ships here soon. Also... I will be doing a 50 subscriber like series at some point. I've already decided what series to do and I'm actually quite happy to order lay it out. And yeah, whenever we do hit 50 uh, subs and once I am finished up with one series on this, I will do it. Or maybe 100 subscribers, who knows. But either way, I'll see you guys next time. Cyber Dragon, 